Okay, in this lecture, I would like to uh, discuss briefly the Bayer category theorem. In the online meeting, we will actually uh, look at the consequences of this theorem for functional analysis, and especially for bounded linear operators. So this is a theorem you've seen in part one of real analysis. It's a topology uh, theorem, but uh, I'd like to discuss this a little bit because um, uh, it's a bit of a strange theorem, at least to me. Um, so here's a statement as stated in the notes, that if you have a complete metric space, say X, then X cannot be constituted from a union of nowhere dense sets, okay? Uh, in other words, if I write the union, that's how we're going to use it. If X, I can write X as the union of some sets EN, not necessarily uh, disjoint, then one of these subset, at least, uh, is not nowhere dense. Now, <clears throat> let's be clear here. Um, recall what dense means. So dense, uh, think of Q in the rational, means that um, if you take any open sets of uh, any open sets, uh, then uh, the intersection with uh, that set must be uh, non-empty. Uh, another way to say that is that if I look at, at the closure of that set, then it contains all open set, okay? So the set is dense, its closure contains all open sets. Now, the other extreme of that is that if uh, a set is nowhere dense, that means its closure contains no open sets whatsoever, okay? so. This is the two extremes, if you wish, okay? So that means if you're not nowhere dense, a bit confusing, right, the double neg negation, that means that at least one of the EN here must have an open set, okay? So why it's called category theorem? Uh, it's because in uh, Bayer's thesis, we proved this, uh, it uh, separates uh, the different sets in two different categories. So the meager sets, the meager sets are the ones that are, can be written as a countable union of nowhere dense sets, okay? And uh, the second category are just the others, okay? So those are called meager sets, the countable union of nowhere dense sets. So another way to actually uh, express bare category theorem is to say that complete metric space is never meager. All right. Now, I like to. I wrote this this way in the notes because uh, this is how we're going to use it. But uh, the statement, which is maybe a, a better statement at least to remember it, is to say that uh, if you have, uh, if you're in um, complete metric space, so always x the complete metric space, and it, you take open set a bunch of open sets ON that are dense, then the intersection is also dense. The intersection might not be open, obviously, but uh, the intersection is dense. So that's kind of a nice um, way to remember it, and uh, it's a nice topological fact. Okay, so what's the link between the two statements? So this uh, statement is stronger. It implies uh, the above. So why? So um, suppose X is actually a, a union of um, um, of ENs, and this ENs uh, are uh, nowhere dense. That means that EN closure of EN contains no open set whatsoever, right? That's nowhere dense. That means that EN complements contains all open sets, right? Complements contain all open sets. And in particular, it's, that just means that uh, it's the set uh, itself. And the intersection by bare, the intersection 
is also dense. Obviously, since this is the closure of EN, this is open. And so we have an intersection of open dense sets and should be also dense by the statement of the theorem. But this is actually contradiction because you started with the fact that X is the union of these guys. So that means this is actually empty. Okay, and the empty set is not dense. X is not trivial. All right, so so that's uh, the statement of Baer's theorem. So now, how do you prove Baer? That's pretty easy, if you know what you're doing. Um, so we showed the stronger statement that is the intersection of open set is dense. Uh, as I was saying, so open set is dense. The other way to so that's one way to say it. But the uh, other way to say, it, which also might be. Uh, might be a bit better to say is that if you take any open set, then the intersection must be non-empty, okay? So think of it as uh, density of rationals in R, right? In any open set, I can find some rationals. So if O is dense, I take any open set, the intersection with O is non-empty. So what you do is you, you just start with one and then uh, one open set. So with one open set, O1, okay? So I have O1, this is my given... Uh, open set U, I want to show that the intersection is not empty with uh, the full U, uh, intersection. So start with O1. So I have uh, X1 that must be in the intersection. But uh, since uh, this is open, I can find a ball which is uh, in that uh, intersection as well. And then you go on like that. You Now instead of U, you take a B1. So B1 intersect O2, O2 is dense, must be done empty. That gives me an X2, which is in there. And that X2 must be uh, must have a ball also included in that. And so I have a ball B2, which is included in the ball B1, um, which is included in B1. Okay? And uh, intersect it, X, uh, O2, etc. Okay? So at the end of the day, you go on like this. So you have a sequence of balls, the Bs, and each of the balls, okay, I have some some X uh, in, in these balls. And obviously, uh, I can take these balls as, as small as I want because I just want these balls to be included in the union. So in particular, I can assume that the radius of Bn is smaller than 2 to the minus n. It might be much smaller than that, but just at least I can take it smaller than 2 minus n. And if you think of it now, because of how I constructed those balls, how I, con uh, how I constructed those balls, the distance between the, the axes uh, must be a smaller than 1 over 2n. So remember that I, I deal with a metric space. Um, so here I wrote the norm, but uh, it's, it's really a metric, so it's a distance. I'm not sure if I have a norm. The distance between the two is smaller than 2 to the minus n, OK? So, and this is true with n plus 1, but the way I constructed it, uh, this is also true if I take n plus k. And so what you get here is a Cauchy sequence. And that doesn't change the 1 over 2n. So you have the xn is Cauchy in the end, the way you constructed those uh, those balls. And therefore, by the fact that x is complete, this way, this way you use the fact that x is complete, xn must converge to uh, an element x. OK? And all those x's are, uh, are, are if you wish, uh, included in each other, all these uh, sequences of, uh, of, uh, of balls, they all in, all these balls are included at what you started with, U intersect O1. And so they, in every U and every ON, so X belongs to actually U intersect, uh, let's see, fancy U intersect ON. 
whoops um, you intersect there's a lot of intersect intersect the intersection of the whole sequence and so uh, in particular that means this is not empty and that's the proof of bear okay so that's actually not too bad so what we're going to see on on Wednesday is um, the application of, of this to a functional analysis uh, which gives you a lot of structures on uh, bounded linear operators and bounded linear functions in particular all right thank you for listening